Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 1 of number theory. Today I'm going to start a new series on number theory, purely on number theory, which starts with congruence modulo. Now first of all, my objective for this series is, the series will be really helpful for the student, those who are going to write KVPY SA and KVPY SX exams, both of them. Now in this series, I'm going to start number theories in which I'm going to start with congruence modulo, the basic concepts, the properties, as well as the level of the question will increase gradually from easy to moderate and then moderate to difficult level. So I'm going to start first of all with the basics of congruence modulo. First I'll walk you through the properties then we'll take the problems as we proceed in the lectures. So please like, share and subscribe because, if, because YouTube algorithm will find a way to spread this video across the student those who are in need. So let's start with the problem. So first of all, let's try to understand the meaning of the symbols. So first of all, this symbol represents congruence. That means A is congruent to B and both A and B will be in the equivalence class as given. Now, one more thing is there, mod of M is there. What does mod of M represent here? So mod of M tells you the operation which is applied to both of the numbers A and B. Now we'll talk about what is exactly what is A is congruent to B. But first of all, you should know what this symbol means this symbol means congruence that means a and b are in the same equivalence classes the meaning of this i'll tell you in the next slide and then what is mod of m a mod of m the operation which is applied on a and b let's understand this okay in the next slide now we'll try to understand what is the actual meaning of congruence modulo what does it stand for and what is the meaning of this and what is this mod of m represents now if i write a is equal to b q plus r that means any number a i can write this as bq plus r and where a represents the dividend b represents the divisor q represents the quotient plus and the last is reminder so any number i can write in this form there's no problem now let's say i'm taking r on this side so i can write this as a minus r is equal to bq again i repeat a, a represents the dividend r represents the reminder b is the divisor and q is the quotient so i can immediately write this now there is one more way to write this a minus r divided by b is equal to q i can write this now this is one form which in which on one side the dividend reminder and divisor is involved now i can convert the same i can write this in same form as you can write this as you can write this as a is congruent to r mod you can write this as b and what is the meaning of the statement? The meaning of the statement is when you divide A, when you divide number A by B, it gives you reminder R. So congruence you can see as a function, okay, which gives you immediately a reminder, okay, when it's going to divide it by B. So mod of B tells you which operation you're doing, what operation you're doing right now, you're dividing a number A by B. Similarly, this two are in equivalence classes, okay. So you can take one number on one side and one the other it is not going to change the value for example if you take if you take r on one side so you can write this as a minus r is congruent to 0 mod b that means when you divide this number a minus r by b you will get this reminder as 0 so actually what is congruence modulo congruence modulo you can take see see this as a function which gives you reminder okay the benefit of this is it does not include the quotient okay it only includes number which is going to divide divided the reminder and the divisor it's same as you can see as a log okay when i write n is equal to a raised to power of x this is one way to write this exponential form this exponential form can be converted into logarithmic form and i'm going to write the logarithmic form that is you can write this as log of n to the base a is equal to x and here we have some constraint okay on the base and the value x Similar way, I can convert whenever this form is given, we can convert into congruence form and from congruence form, we can also convert back into this form. I'll show you. When we can write a minus r is equal to, it's congruent to 0 and it gives you reminder 0 when it's this number divided by b. So I can write this as a minus r when we divide this number by b, okay, by some, uh, you can say by some value, let's say q, it gives you reminder 0, okay. So again, you can convert this in the form a minus r is equal to bq. And then again, you can write this as a is equal to bq plus r. 
So these two forms are interconvertible. And what is the meaning of congruence modulo? It's a function. You can see it's a function as a function which gives you directly reminder and in which the benefit is the quotient is not involved. Only the number which is being divided by some number reminder and that number divisor which is we, we are dividing this by is only involved. So that's the benefit. So first we're going to learn the property of congruences and this is a really powerful tool. Once we learn the property, then we'll see how to solve the quotient using congruence modulo. Now let's start with the properties of congruences. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you all the properties here. Next, once we learn all the properties, after that in lecture two, we're going to solve all the quotient based on these properties. Because if I tell you the properties alone, you'll never get the taste of what I'm telling you right now. Okay, so the quotients are very necessary, which I'm going to cover in lecture two. So let's start with the first property. The first property is A is will be always congruent to A given that it's given as mod of M. That means we are dividing by M. So we can always write this as A is congruent to A mod M. Similarly, next, next property is A is congruent to B mod M. That means if A is any number, if you divide by M, the reminder will be B. You can write this as B is congruent to A mod M. It's not like an equation, okay. This symbol represents for congruence. That means equivalence classes. B and A are in equivalence classes. Let me give you a short example. If I write 9 is congruent to something mod, let's say 8. When I write mod 8, that means this decides the operation. That means I'm dividing 9 by 8 and the reminder will be I can write 1. Now it's not like an equation. You cannot write. Uh, you cannot write one on the other side. In this case, when we write a is congruent to b, mod m, that means a and b are will be in equivalence classes. That means I can write this as one is congruent to nine, mod eight. The meaning of this will not change. That means the meaning is if I divide nine by eight, the reminder will be one. Okay, you can read like this. So there is no problem if you interchange. Now next problem. So the third property is if they say is that if A is congruent to B mod of M, if this is given, and the second thing they say is that if C is congruent to D mod of M, if this is given. If these two are given, then immediately I can write this as A plus C will be congruent to B plus D mod M. And one more thing I can write here that is AC will be congruent to BD mod M. Okay, let me show you through an example. It will be clear through an example. Uh, let's say 8 is congruent to something. I don't know. Let's say mod 7. That means I'm going to divide 8 by 7 and the reminder will be I can write here 1. This is true. Similarly, I'll take one more that is 9 is congruent to something mod 7. Okay, because if you notice the number from which we are dividing is the same. So that's why I'm taking 7 and 7. So you can write this as 9 is congruent to if we divide by 7, the reminder will be 2. Let's apply the first thing here. So they are saying a plus c will be congruent to b plus d mod m. Let's check this. So 9 plus 8 will be 17 is congruent to 1 plus 2 is 3 mod you can say 7. Now the meaning of this is if we divide 17 by 7 then the reminder will be 3 and yes it's 2. 7 to the 14 and if we subtract we'll get 3. So 3 is the reminder. Similarly they are saying one more thing if you multiply AC will be congruent to BD mod M. That means if you divide AC by M the reminder will be BD. So let's check. So 9 8 is a 72 you can write here is congruent to you can say 1 into 2 is 2 mod 7 and the nearest you can divide is 70 and yes the reminder is 2 so both of them are true hence proved now let's come to the last property and which is the most important property which I'm going to use in lecture 2 the property says that if this is true if a is congruent to b mod m is given then I can easily write this as a raised to power k will be congruent to b raised to power k mod m I can show you and here k is will be greater than or equal to 1. So let's say one equation I have that is 9 is congruent to uh, something mod. Let's decide the number which we are dividing. Let's say it's 7. Okay. So if I divide 9 by 7, then the reminder will be 2. Similarly, if I raise to power any 2, for example, if I raise the power, let's say I want to raise the power 2. So 9 square will be congruent to 2 square mod 7. So let's check this is true or not. So we have 9 square is 81 will be congruent to 4 mod 7. Now if you check the nearest we can divide is 77. And if we subtract 77 the reminder will be immediately we will get this as 4. And this will be true for 9 cube, 9 raised to power 4, 9 raised to power 5 and all. 
okay so this property is really useful the property again i'm going to state this is if a is congruent to b mod m is true then i can easily write this as a raised to power k will be congruent to b raised to power k mod of m now i'll see you in lecture 2 in which i'm going to start the question on based on this property